My name is Barry Tan, and I'm going to talk about annatto, which is the fruit that we use in cheese making for the beautiful yellowish orangey color. And this is a chance discovery for me, and had worked out and perfect for a group like us here when we think about the possible 20, 30,000 phytochemicals that are from plants. And I'm a member of the American Chemical Society. We have about 50 million chemicals. And who would have even 20 to 25,000 to 50 million is like one in a thousand. So a lot less phytonutrient than would be chemicals that can be synthesized. And now you further decipher it. I happened to be in South America 25 years ago looking for lutein. This is before people know that lutein is good for macular degeneration. I was looking for the lutein, and then I stumbled on this plant. So I'll tell the story as I go along like that. And now I reduce it to two chemicals that are discovered in the plant. The most potent form of vitamin E, called tocotrienol, not the common tocopherol. And the other one is a new one, so I wanted to walk with you, with me, through some biochemistry. The first part is a lot of uh, uh, animal study, like we've done 200 animal study. I don't know a nutritional supplement company would do this amount, but I'm chronically interested in this. And we have about 25 clinical trials on the tocotrienol piece. On the GG, which I also would describe how I discovered this from the plant as well, uh, I'll walk you through with some nutritional biochemistry, hopefully to bring you along to be the first adopter of why you should consider GG. So we'll do this. As I go through the slide, I won't mention as much. You will see pictures of this beautiful anato plant. If you want to see where this anato plant is, it's in the Bronx Botanical Garden inside the solarium. If you want to go south, you see it in Florida, in Tampa Botanical Garden, parts of Texas, and also uh, in Southern California, like that. If you want to see it everywhere, then you have to go to Hawaii or go to all over South America. You see them uh, like that. <clears throat> I would not mention the dosages. I will highlight the dosages as I go along. And after, uh, towards the end, I'll talk about how much the average would be that you can take. So. There's a disclaimer I had put out. I will cover the story, the background, mostly on the first half on tocotrienol, and take you along for a ride on nutritional biochemistry with Jaranol, Jaranol, I simply acronize GG. You are going to like what I have to say about GG, the biochemistry of it. <clears throat> and the first part, you can see a younger me that have hair, progressively I lose all my hair, so <laughs> as I go on. So it was when I was, you can see the first picture on the top left, it was prophetic. I was in uh, Thailand somewhere, I took a picture with this plant because I thought it was pretty. And then in 1990, uh, 25 years ago, I looked for the giant marigold plant. I went there to look for that. And I was distracted because I saw the anato plant and I studied it. Anato. You know why I studied the anato plant? You see the picture of the fruit. It, it has seeds and there are no flesh. And every fruit that you eat has flesh. It has the miso cup, you know? There's a texture, there's a flavor, but this doesn't have. By this time, I was already a, a carotenoid expert. Uh, pardon me if I use some phrase that leads you into chemistry. Most compounds have double bond, like omega-3, they're unstable. But carotenoids is worse than omega-3 in terms of stability. The double bond is conjugated, which means a double bond, no double bond, double bond, no double bond. Omega-3 is not like that. And when you have like this, they will, they, will, they will have low potential energy and give you the whole spectrum of color, and hence the foliage color like that. So if you think of the foliage color, two weeks of splendor in New England, and then everything turns brown. This should tell you a lot. Carotenoids are very unstable, like that. And then why is that good in carrot? If I hold a carrot, I don't see my hand staining with beta carotene. Good question, because the carotene is inside the cytoplasm of the carrot. The same thing with tomato sauce. The lycopene is inside the cytoplasm. And then lobster, when you cook them, they deprotonate, and then you see the color. Otherwise, you'll be yucky green or blue color like that. So I, I, 
I've been doing this since the 1980s, long time coming. So when I saw this plant, I touch it, it stains my hand. The British call the anato plant, the lipstick plant, it stains your hand. Then I realize it is not bound to anything. It's not in the side of place, it stained my hand like that. I said, aha, there must be a very potent antioxidant to protect it. Now, uh, Dr. Blend said yesterday, there are about 20,000 polyphenols. I was guessing it would be a polyphenol. The last thing on my mind, I guess, it would be a vitamin E tocotrienol. I was already an expert in tocotrienol by this time, and I took it home to analyze, and sure enough, it is the only plant that I know that contains a vitamin E that is exclusively tocotrienol without any tocopherol. I immediately called my colleague and my mentor, who was a University of Wisconsin professor. I got this plant. I only found this tocotrienol. What should I do? And I remember clearly what he said. Barry, if tocotrienol were to mitigate human condition and chronic condition and disease, your tocotrienol better. If not, your cause and mine are lost. So therefore, in the last 20 years, I've committed my whole life to study the, the chronic condition, uh, to study the clinical and then I'll present much of the clinical. I still have a lot more on the tocotrino and GG. Hence, that was my discovery. The GG piece is very simple. I removed the color that is in your cheese, and then I found the compound, thinking with polyphenol, the tocotrino, they protect uh, uh, the, the, the bixin from degradation in the color like that. Remember, the plant now, all, all this to get us in play. We are grateful to have the plant, and Dr. Bozzono is here. He, to study this and know about this and like that. Remember, the plant never make anything for human. <laughs> a little bit of perspective is good. They make it for their own survival. So the plant make the toko try, you know, to protect the color from degradation, to deceive the birds of the air and the frogs so that they will ensure their survival. So they don't have to make uh, the fruit that piece. So when I removed the toko try, you know, I always found one or two percent something that looked like corn oil in the bottom. And as a chemist, I was curious. Eventually, I studied what it was, and it was GG. And then I'll take you with a ride of this new compound. But the first half will be on toko try, you know. So here's my story. You probably read it, so I'll leave it to you uh, like that. So I consider this a one plant wonder. I'm not a medicine man. I happened to be in South America, in the Amazonia, stumble on this. And the, and the flower that I show and the plant is beautiful. I don't mention them, you see them. Lots of stigma like that. Vitamin E is a century old. First discovered by two pediatricians in UC Berkeley. And then they found out that it, it helped to prevent, it helped to bring the fetus to full term. Uh, and, Contrarian to our understanding, it did not become a vitamin E because that is antioxidant property. It does, but it was a, it became a vitamin E because it helped the fetus to full term. It's a birth vitamin like that. And but the antioxidant is known soon after. If you fast forward to the last 20 years, most of the research done by Tocotrieno is on cardiovascular diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and cancer. These are chronic conditions like that. And we decided to go on to study most of it. And I'm kind of crazy, you know. I will never get the bottle to say it's anti-cancer, never. But we have eight clinical trials in Denmark paid by the Danish government to study the cancer. I'm not presenting any cancer study here, just not enough time. But you can ask me when you come to the booth. But we will do the other chronic condition. Briefly, the structure. Most people know the vitamin E look like on the left, tocopherol. And the tocotrienol is on the right. If you look carefully uh, uh, like that, uh, the, the red color thing, the tail, see that? On the tocopherol, the tail of a tocopherol is completely saturated. If you look carefully on the tocotrienol, it's got three double bond, and hence triene, three double bond. That's it. That's the only difference between the tocopherol and tocotrienol. And there are eight isomers, eight possible uh, isomers. And if you look at the literature, uh, uh, the two most active vitamin E are delta tocotrienol and gamma tocotrienol are highlighted in the bottom right, like that. You, you see them. Uh, uh, if you go back and you Google delta tocotrienol or gamma tocotrienol, there will be hundreds of these studies. 
and most of them were not done by us. It would be amazing if we do not consider supplementing this for our health. Now, so delta toco trinol, like a sore thumb sticking out, and gamma close by on the second. And the next slide I show you, you'll be stunned. This is how the plant makes it. See the diagram on the left-hand side. There is no tocopherol. If the tocopherol will be there, it will be somewhere in the early two, three minutes here. It will show up. So the first small peak is gamma tocotrienol. The second peak is sore thumb sticking out delta tocotrienol. In other words, if this is not a plant, this anato tocotrienol would be a drug. I, I don't dare to make this any more concentrated because the last person I want to attract is the FDA knocking on the door. <laughs> so I make it as concentrated as I possibly can, and not anymore because it will become a drug. This is plant-based. It's a physical process. My wife told me that you're given this by God to find out this. Please do not use chemical and solvent. We only use physical method. And this is made in the United States. I'm an immigrant, and I'm proud to do this. If you ever come to visit me in Massachusetts, we make it right here in Massachusetts. <laughs> so, great. Now, of the three sources I've discovered, rice, palm, and anato, on the toko right now. Tokofa you can find anywhere. If you look carefully, the teal color of rice and palm, about 25 to 50 percent of those rice from palm and rice source, they are tocopherol. If you look at the toco trienol, the maroon color, all of it is delta and gamma, exactly as a curve like that. Why do I take time to show this? It's because we found, after 10 years of arduous work, that the tocopherol interferes with the function of toco trienol. Now, normally you wouldn't expect that. You would expect that uh, 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 one drug is allopathic, and nature will produce a mixture, and the mixture is good, so it's synergistic. I don't necessarily disagree with that. But you know, if you accept the premise that things are synergistic in nature, you cannot just write off in your brain and say that, well, things in nature cannot be antagonistic. I, I don't think that it's okay to say. If you eat digitalis, you're going to die, you know? <laughs> so, so things that are from plant can be toxic as well, but we found out that alpha tocopherol interferes with the function of tocotrienol. I wrote them on the left-hand side, so in the bottom I said alpha tocopherol put breaks on tocotrienol function, and on the right, on tocopherol, it does so. So you can read faster than me rather than me repeating. If any of you are interested, I'll send you some literature. If you ask me simply, why is alpha tocopherol taken in huge amount, no good like that? First, it should be intuitive. Plant does not make a lot of alpha tocopherol. Plant makes a lot of gamma tocopherol. If you go online, you said you see this. They make gamma tocopherol to protect the oil in their plant, not to go rancid, like soya bean. I know people think soya bean ha has protein. Yes, it does. We have soy oil, right? So they don't want the soy oil to get rancid. They make gamma tocopherol. And why does anato only make toco trienol? Because the, the carotene in it is the most oxidizable of anything. So they have to make the most potent vitamin E to protect the anato. That's the reason. We just got, I just got lucky to have discovered it from the plant. Otherwise, so I've said enough of this. So this is a brief recap. And the bottom two you can see from what they have. So now I'm going to go to the, the, the various study. It is a journey over the last 20 years, and a lot of things we didn't know at the beginning. So we study inflammation, lipid oxidation, arteriosclerosis. So initially we did ant rabbit study. This is a journey. We actually did a lot of this study. Is, if I were to be on your side, did you do this, did you do this? Good question to ask. But on my side, if I were to do something, it's going to take two or three years to do a study, besides the cost but we actually systematically study this. So we use rabbit in this study, the translated doses there, and we notice that it worked on, on cholesterol, so good. So, and then and it gave me some understanding of the dosage. I want to give this as a picture that sometimes we forget. It's, it's very simplistic. We have about 30,000 miles. It's from LA to New York about 10 times. 
and these are delivering the nutrients to the 38 trillion cells in the body. 38 trillion is about 5,000 times the population of the Earth. This one, I wanted to think of a cell. It has cell wall, and it's a gated community. Think of it as a gated community. The nutrient comes in, and the waste goes out. And other, and you know, there are probably about two, three thousand uh, antioxidant that people talk about that even for the phytonutrient. I usually like to cut the chase because the word antioxidant is kind of like overused. I care that it is a lipid antioxidant. Why? We have protein, we have carbohydrate, we have nucleic acid, and then we have fat. Of these four main group in a human body, the easiest to get oxidized to go bad would be fat. If you don't believe me, you have a stick of butter on a hot summer day out. Go back in two hours and smell the butter. Or like that. Even if you drive past a roadkill, that smell is not oxidized protein. It's oxidized fat first. So fat is the lowest fruit of things going bad. Now you go back to the 38 trillion cells. 80% of the membrane is fat. So now, what are the antioxidants that would protect it? In the 1980s, there was a famous Austrian professor. He decided to answer that question. He extracted it out from the uh, cell membrane and figured out all the antioxidants in the cell membrane. Not all the antioxidants the nutritional supplement company tells you. The, all the antioxidants in the cell membrane. And more than 90% of those antioxidants are vitamin E molecule. And the remaining 10% are CoQ10 that the body makes. It stays right there like that. So therefore, protecting that to maintain uh, uh, the, uh, the cell membrane so that the gated community will work good is, is at the very rudimentary level I can present it to you like that. And, these, and I can only know of three chemicals that look like these. Resveratrol doesn't fit like that. Curcu curcumin doesn't fit like that. Uh, quercetin doesn't fit like that because they have OH group everywhere. They don't stick into the cell membrane. What, the, uh, what do? I can only think of three. Vitamin E, as in tocotrienol, manoquinone 4, MK4, and CoQ10. And what do they look like? They look like a sperm. They have an, a head and then they have a saturated tail. And the saturated tail, it sticks into the cell membrane. It is not complicated. So there are other antioxidants like vitamin C, like this, but they don't stay in the cell membrane. They're in other domains, so like that. So that's this part that I mentioned. We don't know how to do study on removing arteriosclerosis. So this is the only study we have. We did many animal studies. So we found that tocotrienol have anti-Velcro effect. I just said it like that. We don't want anything to stick onto the artery. If it sticks onto the artery, it's the beginning of arteriosclerosis, whether it's calcium or whether it's plaque or whatever it is. So if you look at this, the inflammation drop, the adhesion molecule drop, and the proteolytic enzyme that would destabilize the plaque drop. And you can see the bottom one, alpha tocopherol didn't work compared to control, and the tocotrienol does, and the translated dose you can see there. Finally, we get to do clinical study, and from here most of them are clinical study. This I can draw three things. This is an arduous amount of work, the dose escalation, 125, 250, 500, 750. This is at a time we didn't know any better. So we have to do this to find out the active dose. So by looking at the active dose, it looked like the 250 and 500 work just fine. For the cholesterol piece, the 250 would work fine. For the inflammation piece, it could be 500. Note this first thing. So we, we've mapped that out. We also asked the researcher to say half the people that have high cholesterol have heart condition, but the other half is uh, inflammation. Can you please make some inflammation mark? And he did. You see the inflammation also dropped. But there's a third point we picked up from this uh, a long study. Notice that after 500 milligram it dropped and 750 it dropped. The first suggestion, oh, the more you give, the worse you get. And 
I want to let you know, at the time we did not know how high the dosage ought to be. We gave people a slug, one at a time, not BID, just one dose, 125, 250, 575. We didn't know. Now we found out that much beyond 250, the body cannot handle on its absorption. You follow? So at the 500 dose, it drops, and it's not because it's toxic or anything like that. So therefore, in, in the study now that we have 300, uh, 600 milligram, we have, if we have it the BID. If it's 900 milligram like cancer study, TID. It cannot be given one, one big dose because they can't absorb it. So this study have those three derivatives. And this is a reduction of the, that study. So pretty much the same, I move on. So now, on this NAFLD thing, all of us have seen this in various format. It is a cluster of metabolic syndrome, is a kind blood pressure is moderately high, triglyceride moderately high, and the LDL reduce the you know, circumference of the waist, and fasting a glucose increase, we kind of know this. But interestingly, in metabolic syndrome, the LDL is not usually high. The HDL is always depressed. I have been a member of the American Diabetes Association for 35 years. It's a long, long time. So I sit and listen to endocrinologists all the time, and they say this cluster. Remember, this was called Syndrome X. And Gerald Reven from Stanford, he figured it out, and then it became metabolic syndrome. So we did a lot of this study. But somewhere, I had to bite the bullet. Because if I explain to, to patient, I, I'm not a practitioner, you explain to patient, it's hard for them to handle something like this because it is metabolized. But they can handle, you say, oh, your liver has a problem, your heart has a problem. Then somewhere in the mix of this, I thought, wait a minute. A metabolic syndrome is a cluster of this. What would be a manifestation of an organ that have metabolic syndrome? Non-alcohol fatty liver disease. I decided to go hard after that. Five years of my life, I did that. I did a three-month study, finished, published, six-month study, finished, published, and 12-month study. It's, when you add it together, you can do it in two years. It's not like that. <laughs> By the time you recruit, and then this, and then COVID, this and that, the whole thing is five years long. It's finished. I am proud to present that data to you in the next few slides. You'll see. It is so obvious. It will be shocking to me if you would not do this for your patient. I know that sounds brazen statement I just made, but if it wouldn't, it would be shocking to me. Even before we did that, we did he healthy human and elderly. And then on this, as a, the C-reactive protein drop, the total antioxidant drop, this should be good. But when we did that, we didn't know any better. So I have a combo of tocotrinocursetin, resveratrol. I didn't really know exactly what I'm doing, but they're healthy people. So it looked like generally this kind of compound are good. So having known this, now we begin to frame in. This is the context globally, 20, 30% people have NAFLD. In the US, it's about 90 million, 30%. If people were to have on, on, the, on the list uh, of, a, of a liver transplant, we will never have enough liver like that. We, just think of this, you know. Who would have guessed 30, 40 years ago, people would, uh, would eat food and would have the problem like alcohol cirrhosis? Nobody would have guessed it. Enough that they call this such an awkward phrase, you know, non-alcohol fatty liver disease, so like that. So I will have, you don't have to get fixated on this table, which is busy, but I have a few uh, a graphical slides that follow this. I put this thing here to show if I were to be a patient, even if I don't talk to a doctor, the first three things that would drop would be good enough indication for me. And if I were to be a health professional doctor, I would measure the middle, middle uh, uh, section. It's easy to do because it's blood work. And if I were to be a specialist, I would look at the bottom, uh, bottom half like that. The reason we did the 12-month study was we not only want the health professional and doctors to buy in on it, we want the specialists to buy in on it. That's a harder sell. So the only thing short of us doing is the biopsies. 
because the IRB Institutional Review Board would, allow, would not allow us to do it, so we have to do CAT scan to me measure it so that the specialists would buy in on it. So let me now summarize these three in a few, sli in a few di uh, graphical diagram. If you look at the three, six, nine, we didn't have a nine month study, a 12 month, you can see the BMI, the weight circumference, and the weight drop. I don't think that this is intrinsically a weight loss product. The metabolites are so out of kilter. So when the metabolites come back kilter, the weight responded by reducing. So we didn't see any weight loss in the first month because the shortest time we have is three months. And most weight loss products are two to four weeks. This is not two to four weeks. But however, the weight loss is sustained over the entire 12 months. So that's an encouraging sign because the managing of the metabolite was sustained over the 12 months. So that this piece, the second one, a health professional will probably measure this marker. You can see it systematically dropped. Remember, this is not a study where we follow three months, then six months, then 12 months. This is an independent three month study finished an independent six-month study finished, an independent 12-month study finished. So this is even better than a continuum study like that, you know? And look at that inflammation drop. I, I was stunned by seeing this neat thing. The next one. The specialists would want to buy it. They need to know if the fat will get out of the liver, cetosis. They need to know if the fat would damage the liver and have fibrosis and scarring tissue. That one drop. We also measure apoptosis. When the fat is too high in the liver, the liver cell dies. And so they, they, and then we're able to map that out. And then the HOMA IR, because endocrinologists like diabetic, uh, diabetes doctor, they wanted to see not only your sugar drop, they wanted to see your insulin would also respond. So the equation for the sugar drop and the insulin response is a HOMA IR. So, that, so that's the insulin resistance. That also measure. It's as sweet as I can present it to you here. And then this doctor that did this work, he was a little bit nuts, but he, he really wanted to do it. He wanted to measure if there is any responsible microRNA that explained this. So in this 12-month study, we, fought, we also gave people a separate group, alpha tocopherol, even though I lamented not to take alpha tocopherol. Why did I do that? About 15 years ago, alpha tocopherol was used to mitigate NAFLD. So I have enough uh, doctors asking me, how, did, how does your tocotrienol compare with alpha tocopherol group? So this is the comparison, alpha tocopherol group. For most other markers that were similar, but in inflammation and apoptosis, that the delta tocotrine is about 20% better than the alpha tocopherol. In terms of reducing inflammation and apoptosis and mitigating the, uh, the microRNA of the... Finding the microRNA to drop when a body produces so much is like picking, finding a pin in a haystack. And these pins were found in this haystack that the toco trinol would drop. It's probably as good as it can be in terms of fatty liver that I can imagine, other than having biopsies, which the IRB won't allow us to do, you know, for the study. So now moving on, so we've done, I convince you on the fatty liver side. What about other ones? So we have this study, 300 milligram uh, 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 on people with prediabetes. A three-month study, you can see those numbers, it drops. So it's good. So then quickly, the next one. The study embody a lot more. I just give you a summary. This one here, the researcher was fastidious. They said they have enough information resveratrol would work. So they did a study on metabolic syndrome to measure central obesity and inflammation, but they have delta tocotrienol and resveratrol. Every time I say delta tocotrienol, it's from, just from the anato, like that. And the resveratrol we don't make, but he felt that the resveratrol would work, so this is it. So if you have patient have metabolic syndrome, not yet have diabetes, you, you can see the data there. The primary and secondary endpoint the weight drop also in this group, so it's good. 
You can ask me, I can tell you what companies I'm not supposed to on stage tell people who make those products. We only make large amount. Other companies make product for health professional give to the patient. So, so we are committed to do the clinical studies behind. So this is the uh, type two diabetes. So we went after this. So the 250, 250 and 500 milligram. Notice the two, 500 milligram, when they are already frank diabetic, the 500 milligram uh, adds some, but not so much more than the 250. So the, if they're already diabetic, it did not add so much more, even at the 500 milligram, just from the numbers that I have. So this is a summary of all of those. And in the bottom, you can see, for a healthy individual, 100 to 300 milligram oxidative protection because of the fat in your body will be good enough. If you have mild chronic condition, 3 to 400 milligram. Advanced chronic condition, then 4 to 600 milligram. Only in our cancer patients we use 900 milligram. Uh, and, and the highest single dose is 300 milligram, and then you divide them after that. Okay, so now I have the second half. Uh, I don't have huge amount of clinical study on the second half, but I'm taking you with a ride with me. Hopefully you will be the uh, first adopter of this and you tell other people about the Gyrinol, gyrinol is an endogenous nutrient in our body which means your body makes it. Almost the moment I say that, you want to ask the question, why does our body make GG and what is it for? If you walk out of this room and you know that, you are blessed and you can tell other people about it. And it's not yet even in biochemistry textbook, never mind nutrition textbook, a medical a, a, a textbook, nowhere there. So biochemistry, stay with me and I think you're gonna love it. So, this molecule is found in plant as it is in mammal. Beautiful is enough. On a plant, the green color. Look, GG, the top. If the two OH groups stick together, that is carotenoid. So the next time you eat your vegetable and fruit, you see the color, think GG. Two molecules of GG make carotene. All the carotene you prescribe, you take. Lutein, beta carotene, da 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 da, go on and on. We have 600 of them. They all came from GG. Can you imagine that? So the next one, tocotrienol. See, the reason I discovered the GG there is because the, G, the plant used GG to make tocotrienol. You see, the whole GG is on the tocotrienol molecule. The other one is probably most interesting. What plant are not green color? Chlorophyll. The entire tail of chlorophyll is GG, there. So without GG, plant cannot live. <laughs> we are grateful they are GG because you depend on the plant to have the life that we have, right? Now on the mammalian side, look at that. MK4, the entire tail of MK4 is GG. I'm gonna come back to this one. Look at CoQ10. Two and a half, CoQ10 is like an albatross. You know, it's just so, it's just huge, you know. It's hard to absorb, so everybody talk about bioavailability, because they can't get that in. But if you take GG, two and a half molecule of GG is the entire tail of CoQ10. I bet you heard this for the first time. When have you heard how you can, how you can make CoQ10? You can take CoQ10, GG makes CoQ10, and GG takes, makes MK4, not MK7. I know heard, uh, many of you hear about MK7, but I'll come to that. All right, this one here, a little bit more. This one here, I'm, I'm wanting to say the bioavailability side. <clears throat> Look at the bottom diagram, see that? The pharmaceutical company came up with the phrase small molecule. Anything molecular weight less than 1,000, and anything more than 1,000 is not. So the, the smallest, of the large molecule is insulin. It's about 6,000 molecular weight. And even that, we have to inject. Otherwise, it, the body can absorb. So this, then look at the small molecule. The largest of the small molecule is CoQ10. It's already reaching 1,000. It's very difficult to get CoQ10 to get in our body because it's so huge. Meanwhile, look at GG, three times smaller than the size of CoQ10. So it's easy to absorb like that. So, People say that CoQ10 is ubiquitous. 
may I say that MK4 and CoQ10 is ubiquitous because GG is ubiquitous. It's more that. And GG is endogenous in your body. So I'm going to move on to this. <clears throat> Think this is a pathway. I'm not showing you to see how smart I am as a biochemist. This pathway, mavalonic acid pathway, is Interstate 95. We have many interstates in the country, but no interstate is traveled as much as from Maine to Florida, 95. This is it. Because we need cholesterol to live. We demonize cholesterol because of hypercholesterolemia. Otherwise, nine Nobel Prizes are given for cholesterol. So cholesterol must be doing something right in our body, like that. And this is the highway. So if you look, and the body makes five carbon at a time. Mavalonic acid, five. And 15, phanosol. You go left, making squalene and then cholesterol, like that. Now, go down, is, people usually don't think about that. That is your GG. Sitting right there on the Interstate 95 is your GG. Nobody talks about it. And then, but everybody talks about CoQ10. Probably nobody talks about MK4 until now. And then GG is also required for the synthesis of skeletal muscle protein. I will crystallize this in the next slide because of drug prescription and drug taking. Satin drug hits at C5. See that? It must be very powerful because at C15, and 30 steps later, cholesterol dropped like mad, 40-50%. We know this. It is the most successful drug out there. You can demonize that in the way you want, but it is the most successful cholesterol-lowering drug this anybody know about, but statin drug. It inhibits a C5, and cholesterol drop. 50 million people take statin. 10 times less is FTI, bisphosphonate, postmenopausal women to bring strong calcium to the bone. That's it. Hit at C15. Now, once you hit, let me stay on this for a few moments. <clears throat> you hit on the statin drugs, right? Everybody know when you take statin drug, cholesterol drop, a good thing. You take statin drug, CoQ10 drop. Everybody in this room knows that. What people don't know in this room is CoQ10 drop because GG drop. Look at that. CoQ10 cannot drop before GG because GG is required for the synthesis of CoQ10. See that? So it's inhibiting GG. Now, how do you map this together? You and I would care if you take statin drug to take CoQ10. The traditional cardiologist does not care. He or she will only care. Do you have any back pain, muscle pain? See, they always ask. They're fishing for myopathy. That's there. Skeletal muscle protein synthesis. GG is required for this synthesis of skeletal muscle. There it is. So GG is a piece that connects the dot, the skeletal muscle protein synthesis, and CoQ10. But they're not in the same pathway. So if you take GG, we, because of this, we are all in. We have a study in Texas now, Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas, on people who are <clears throat> taking statin drugs, under a cardiologist care who have confirmed myopathy and walking on a medical treadmill. Those on a, 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 a GG and those not on GG. The study is ongoing. We probably won't know until the end of this year to, to figure out if we would mitigate the myopathy. So that's it. So this is as clear as I bring it out to be. So now I can only show you on animal study and some biochemistry. This is a protein synthesis part. I don't want to bore you on this. It probably, and also work on sarcopenia. So that means not necessarily on statin. Sarcopenia, that's a big problem, you know? As we age, we lose muscle mass, and we try to resist the muscle mass loss by having exercise. So that piece, sarcopenia is lack of making muscle, and therefore it's also a GG piece. Everybody in the room knows we need amino acid and creatine and some of these branch amino acid like that. Those are the fuel for making the protein. But most people don't know. If I go back, see this slide here? Look at the protein thing. You need the GG. A protein has molecular weight typically like 100,000. It is much, much bigger than an albatross. 
because CoQ10 is 1,000 like that. So when the protein is half made, something has to hold on to the protein. Does everybody ever explain to you? If you take copious amount of protein, it doesn't just go to where you think you want to go to. The protein is chopped liver. It becomes like amino acid. And then they have to restitch it back. And how does it restitch it back? In the nucleus. The DNA do it. We have 20 essential amino acids. The permutation will be impossible to fathom, except if you're controlled by the DNA. So the DNA makes one amino acid at a time to stitch it on. And then when it's half stitched on, then the, the protein is already 50,000. It's huge. So there's something holding on to the protein, partially made protein, until it's fully made. That unassuming compound is GG. So if you, if you don't have the GG, the body is unable to make it. It's not even an amino acid. It's just a diterpenoid, you know? But it needs that to, to live. So <clears throat> I said that I would come back to visit the MK4 because people know about MK7, anti-arterial sclerosis, and then help to make strong bone, the MK7. I don't disagree that those studies are valid. <clears throat> and people said that, oh, Vitamin K1 eat a lot of dark green vegetable phylloquinone. Vitamin K2 would be MK7 because of fermentation you make in the gut. The Japanese natto, you have fermentation, kimchi, blah, 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 uh, uh, like that. Correct. But isn't it curious? If you take organ meat and meat, there's no MK7. There's MK4. So it's a so if it is meat and in the human body, the MK4, I want to know about that. And I can tell you further, the only manoquinone made in the human body is MK4. So don't you want to know why the body want to make MK4 and not MK7? MK7 is made here in the colon. So if you're making the colon, well, that's not absorbed. It's already past the, the intestine for absorption. So it's probably good for IBS and those things, or some kind of a, a gut brain axis, gut liver axis. I don't, I'm not trying to poo poo that there's a place for that. But that's a further reach than if you take, if the body makes MK4 directly, it makes MK4 extra hepatically in 25 different organs. So there must be a reason why the body makes MK4 to the exclusion of all the other MK. Here it is, in the simple biochemistry uh, on the right-hand side. The top curve, uh, the top picture there is phyloquinone saturated, and then only a fixed amount go in for clotting factor, and then the tail, uh, the tail is cut off, the phytel tail, and then the quinone goes in, and then they look for a GG in 25 different organs, stitch it onto the ring, that's MK4. I, I'm, I'm putting it as plainly as I could for you. This biochemistry is not going to change. This is a biochemistry. Therefore, the question is, are MK4 is make less only if when we get older, we don't make enough GG? Because the tail is GG. And also, if you take statin drug, it only make it worse because it inhibits GG. And if you take bisphosphonate, it inhibits GG. That's it. So it's biochemistry, not even nutrition. And it's not going to change, you know. And by the way, if you go back here, this is only, uh, it is only proven in 2010, GG converts to MK4. So it's not a long time ago. This study was done about three, five years ago. I did not know at the time that GG converts to MK4, so we use GG and it increased strong bone. Had I known, I would have asked the scientist, can you measure how much MK4 it is there? So now, however, GG increased the bone health. So GG converts, by the way, for the record, we sell a lot of MK, mostly people buy MK7, MK4 here. In Japan, ironically, the other one have natto that makes MK7, natto, you read this, they, they inseminate this in your head, you know. But in Japan, the only drug for anti-osteoporosis is MK4. Isn't that curious? 45 milligrams. You Google, MK4 anti-osteoporosis drug is in Japan, but here is a nutritional supplement, MK4. 
not seven. <laughs> so here, inflammation, I can do another time for you. This one, I, I like, oh, my, my bottom thing slipped. It, it, it just get moved around. On the left curve there would be control, CoQ10, uh, cholesterol blank, shaded CoQ10. And then the next one to it, if you add statin, cholesterol drop expected, CoQ10 drop, see that? You go to the next one, that would be GG. If you put GG, it, did not, it does not lower cholesterol, not, not supposed to, but it increased the synthesis of CoQ10, see that? The, the third column. And then on the fourth column, it GG plus statin. Sorry, the bottom thing messed around, move it. So it statin and GG, the cholesterol drop, and the GG prevents the statin to lower the CoQ10. That's it. That's all this study, Italian study. <clears throat> I already talked about myopathy. I'm going to skip this. And this is, a, they did it on zebrafish. On the muscle thing, you can see the destruction of the muscle tone uh, on the satin and GG in the bottom. And even in the cell, the cell simply just died. The satin treated, the, the cell kind of clumped together. It's not viable like that. Australian study. The GG increased calf muscle force. It would, you see that? With the statin reduces force production and GG completely abrogated. And when they don't give statin, it increases muscle force. So it works on people with soulless muscle atrophy. And the dosage you can see in the bottom. And this is another study in Japan. They atrophy the muscle, no GG added. And so this is a translation for people who study muscular atrophy, like in sarcopenia. And why are the Japanese scientists interested in this? Because the elderly population is high, so they care about it. And they identify GG as a source for that. <clears throat> this is a study done in China. In the last 10 years, we begin to notice people who take statin to lower cholesterol, they begin to have statin-induced diabetes. Yeah, like that, you see that? You can read it in the news. And it came out from the Jupiter study. They found out that this is so because statin incapacitate the muscle to take up the sugar. So they lose energy, low energy, and the uptake of the glucose is not there. When they add GG, you can see the glucose increase, the insulin increase, the glucose uptake increase, both uh, in the blood and the second one also in the muscle, and they check out on four of those different muscles. So they, yet here they identify that GG is also Decimation of GG by statin is also responsible for statin-associated diabetes causing. And this is a study on the GG impact on glucose without statin. So I didn't want to say that only in statin case GG is relevant, but even not, you can see at the dose doses, the GG works on, improve, on improving the glucose challenge and the insulin challenge. These next two, three slides, and then I'm finishing here, <clears throat> has to do with bronx. How many of us know bronx? Bronx is bisphosphonate-related osteonecrosis of the jaw. Postmenopausal women, estrogen drop, and then they cannot retain the bone, in, in, uh, calcium in the bone, so they take bisphosphonate. It helps to ensure uh, the mineralization of the bone. Good. In a weird situation, when you take bisphosphonate, and it's discovered by dentists in 2002, they see the patient, the woman patient, and they thought, whoa, this woman patient, patient have worse than just a problem in the teeth. She had necrosis of the jaw. That's a bad thing. This is not normally a thing. Of course, when you have necrosis of the jaw, then you have opportunistic infection, blah, 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 and a whole string of other things. But mostly, the most severe thing is when people have bone metastasis. I'm, I'm, I'm sad way already. People have cancer, their bone metastasis. When the cancer moves to the bone, the options are not good because you can't cut the bone. You know what I mean? So then they have to take 
10 to 20 times higher bisphosphonate. This is not for the reason for strengthening the bone. This is for the reason that when you take bisphosphonate, the bisphosphonate will go to the bone and kill the cancer. You with me? So then, then these patients have much higher incidence of BRONJ because of the reason I gave to you. Five million American women take bisphosphonate. Of course, 50 million take statin. So it's a perspective. So this is an animal study. Clearly, GG improved bone tooth. You can see on the bottom right, on the three dots there, did that in the animal study. And this is yet another study, very recent. You, you can wish the best for me. We are trying to work with uh, Thomas Jefferson University. I'm going all out to do this. To show. We're, doing, we're working with Thomas Jefferson University Dental School, Dental Surgery, and they're treating women on this, and in, this is an exception. So they have tooth uh, uh, necrosis, so they're going to put, drop, and implant calcium fortified GG onto their mouth to see if we would help to reduce this. This would be a, a two-year study. Ask me in another year or two. If that worked, this would be good. We're not going to make this as a drug. If the FDA allowed this as a, as a droplet on the mouth, this would be good. However, for simplistic application, you can have an oil pool or mouthwash. We can put GG here to reduce inflammation of the gum. That we have. Ask me who does it, I'll tell you later. I'm not supposed to tell on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so this is reducing inflammation is the bottom left, uh, bottom right. You can see uh, how, how this is. Uh, uh, done like that, and it also increased the angiogenesis so that the gum would grow back. The reason bisphosphonate uh, uh, inhibit this kind of uh, cause this kind of necrosis is it inhibit the gum cell from making GG, and therefore the gum simply just die, and hence the word necrosis. That's it. It's a very specific side effects of GG when in the, in, in the bone is a good thing. It inhibits the osteoclast and promote the osteoblast and therefore it's good for the bone. However, it does the opposite in the gum. So it's that one we're paying some attention on the side effects. <clears throat> this is my crystal ball. About 40 million satin users in the U.S., it may reach 80 million, maybe not 20, 30, 20, 40, perhaps. Statin is a 21st century aspirin, whether we like it or not. And statin will replace the 52 million acetaminophen Tylenol uh, user currently. So that means it's huge for a prescription drug. So it's one in four patients have SAMs, and that's the name. You can, oh, by the way, Google SAMs. And then you read yourself. Sand in the bottom there, statin associated muscle symptom. You can read all about this yourself like that. It was first noted in 1988 with the first introduction of statin. And then another one in four patients may develop type 2 diabetes. And the American Diabetes Association said that all diabetic must take statin drug because diabetic have one three times higher chance of having cardiovascular event. So it's just a paleotrophic benefit for diabetic. And then ironically, uh, this statin drug causes diabetes. So they're, they're struggling with it, how to change that uh, thing. So now possibly 20 million statin users may benefit uh, from GG. <clears throat> so final, this is one of the, my final one or two slides left. We, I think that it would be a great thing to have a ubiquinol and GG. And I call this a disruptive CoQ10. The ubiquinol is bioavailable because it got two OH group rather than ketone groups. They absorb better, naturally bioavailable. And ubiquinol is an activated form of CoQ10. Now, I want to say this, and I want to be true and honest. If you take ubiquinone, if your body is healthy, your body converts it to ubiquinol. Keep that in mind, like that. And, however, if you have deficiency, then you can take the activated form. The second one, and then third one, ubiquinol is an antioxidant. It is well known. It resides on the LDL particle and prevents the LDL particle from oxidation. Another view. The fourth one, 
I call it the biohacker form of CoQ10 because of the biochemistry of the combination of ubiquinol and GG, in particular for people who have sarcopenia, who take statin, who take bisphosphonate. So that's the reason why the number four. And then number five, the GGPs is not going to have a problem with absorption. The ubiquinol piece, like I mentioned, is an albatross. So we form, to formulate this with MCT and then Quiala, it's all natural. MCT, you need to have fat to emulsify the CoQ10. And Quiala is a bark, pine, pine bark extract that we use from chili, like that. So if you have, by the way, if you ever take a bioavailable form of CoQ10, please read carefully, how do they make the CoQ10 bioavailable? You can put detergent, you make the CoQ10 bioavailable. But if they put nasty stuff on it, don't get that kind of CoQ10. Get the kind of CoQ10 that you natural thing. So I found this, Quiala. You can Google, it's a South American work, it's from the bark of a Chilean tree. <clears throat> this is a summary. If you were to uh, take a, a GG, 150 milligram, uh, 300 uh, with a meal, and this is an endogenous and supplemented thing, I am very confident that the GG, with my work with GG, I think it, I, this would be such a beautiful thing for me to retire on the GG. I really thought that after the Toco trial, you know, my life is done, you know. I, I got to do something with my wife and do other things, you know, like that. Then I stumbled on this. I said, Elizabeth, this is, this is a good stuff, you know. I got to spend a little bit more time on this GG. So I, I, I think I have to stick around for another five years or so. When I finish this, then other people can take on what they should do with this GG. Aren't we grateful that we get this from a plant? You know, the plant gives this to us, and we make a, a, G, a GG. Got three minutes, I can finish on time. I'm doing book signing in Design for Health booth from 12.30 to 1.30, 1.17, and at our own booth in American River, uh, like that. And then you can pick up a lot of other literature. So uh, on, the CoQ, uh, on the Toco Trienol piece, please consider that as a regimen and protocol for your usage in your patient and for your personal health. I'm probably the only person standing taking CoQ10 longer than any other person standing for 30 years of my life. And, and I'm having good health, no complaints, you know. On the GG piece, the biochemistry is fantastic. And the GG is just supposed to be a perfect combo with that of uh, uh, CoQ10. And I haven't figured out the MK4 piece yet, you know. Uh, but remember, MK4 GG cannot entirely make. It's only partially made on the tail. On the ring system, it requires you to eat green leafy vegetable. So if you take green leafy vegetable, you got the head. And then the fixed amount of you, uh, phyloquinone will go in to have prevent the clot, uh, to do the clotting thing. And then the other ring would go in with the tail cut off, stitch it to a GG, and therefore you have MK4. Uh, only if we go older, we don't make enough GG. We're doing animal study now to show that as the, as the animal get older, they simply don't make enough GG. It's a biochemistry question, not even a nutrition thing. But I got enough hint to find out that as we go older, we simply don't make enough CoQ10. That tells me that there's not enough GG around to make CoQ10. Thank you very much for your question. Question? <laughs> you taking questions? Hello, over here. Question for you? Well, I, we have one or two minutes if somebody okay. have a question. I have a question over here. Um, when, can you tell us a little bit about the plant, how far away it is from the process? How do you preserve it from oxidizing through the process of manufacturing, where the plant is, how long it takes to get, and how do you prevent it from oxidizing? Oh, uh, <clears throat> as soon as the plant, the pot is ripe, they are immediately harvest. The harvesting of this part is an artisan. There are no mass plantation on this. They're like grapes. So you cannot just crop them off like that. They're not an annual crop. So they take it to a plant and then they have a shaker. They shake it and the seeds falls out. So probably within 
uh, less a uh, three to four days they would harvest it because they they have some sugar on the plant if they don't then they'll be they'll begin to be fermented and then then they'll compromise uh, the extraction so so the the removal of the colors are done already in south america so when we got from them would be already an extract uh, they have a lot of other crude stuff in it and then we'll go through systematic physical processing uh, to remove all the things that we don't want like that without using chemical or, or solvent. So uh, right there in, uh, I don't know any of you know, Pine it's four hours north of us, Pioneer Valley with Northampton, Amherst, any of you know that place in Massachusetts? On the western side uh, of Massachusetts. Well, if you have questions, you can come to uh, uh, the two booths that I uh, mentioned. I'll do the book signing. Thank you again very much for your attendance.